Now, DNA is another biological molecule that we need to know the structure of and be able to explain. Lots of drawings in this one, folks. DNA structure is essentially comprised of three types of molecules, three different molecules. Now, it's how those molecules actually fit together that's very, very important when it comes to explaining the structure of DNA. First up, we have our phosphate group. Now, our phosphate group is essentially H2PO4 minus. So we got a central phosphorus, we've got a single bonded oxygen with a negative charge on it, and we've got two OHs and a double bond O. Now, don't worry, all of these structures at this point, I'll tell you, are given in your data sheet, okay? So you will not need to remember the structures of all these things I'm drawing here. Secondly, we have our what's known as 2-deoxyribose sugar, or deoxyribose, it's probably shortened to most of the time. Now, this is a six-carbon molecule, okay? It contains six carbons. You can see you've got that kind of pentagon shape, and we've got three OHs coming off it. Now, that's really important because they're going to get involved in bonding when it comes to building our DNA molecule. Lastly, we have our bases. Now there are four different types of base here. These all contain nitrogen. That's one thing they do have in common. Our four bases are known as adenine and thymine. Now they come together as a pair. Cytosine and guanine also come together as a pair, which we'll find out later. So I'm not going to go and draw out all of their structures here. Like I said, they're in your data sheet. But one thing that's important that they all have in common is that they have this NH group at the bottom left of a molecule. So it's like you know a secondary amine group at the bottom left-hand corner of the molecule. And it's that bit that actually gets involved in the bonding to the sugar, which we'll see in a minute. So we've got three main molecules, a phosphate, a sugar, and a base. Now they come together to form a section of DNA, like a building block of DNA, shall we say, and that's known as a nucleotide. So a nucleotide contains one phosphate, one sugar, and a base. Now they fit together like so. So at the top of the phosphate, you'll notice we are losing a hydrogen in that top OH group, okay? And that's because that phosphate is bonded to the bottom of another sugar molecule. The middle part of the phosphate is exactly the same. That double bond O doesn't go anywhere. But at the bottom, we've also lost a hydrogen. That's because it's bonding to the top left OH group of our sugar. So drawing the rest of the sugar out here, as I said, that OH group on the bottom left, that's bonded to another phosphate. So those dashed black lines that I've drawn, they're bonded to each other, but of course, to other parts of other nucleotides, okay? But that's where they essentially join up when you put them more than one end to end, and we'll see that in a second. Lastly, that top right OH group of our deoxyribose sugar, that again loses, well, actually loses the oxygen and the hydrogen there and bonds directly to the nitrogen in that bottom left corner of the base. Now, that's why I mentioned that previously in the bottom left-hand corner, you got that NH, and that's what bonds our base to our deoxyribose sugar. Now, where are three bonds occur? I'm putting little black stars here. So that's where each of these three molecules is bonded to each other. All of these have got one thing in common. They are all condensation reactions. Remember, condensation reaction is where a small molecule is actually eliminated when those bonds are actually formed. In this case, it's water. H2O is lost every time these bonds form. And if you look at where those bonds are, you can see where the O's and the H's actually come from to form those molecules of water. So three condensation reactions occur when a nucleotide is actually formed. But of course, this is just one tiny section of DNA. These all fit together to form long strands of DNA. And think of the phosphate and the sugar forming the backbone of the DNA molecule. Now, if you'll bear with me, I'm going to try and draw this for you now. So this first section that I'm drawing here, I'm just drawing a P in a circle for a phosphate just to make life a little bit easier. And I'm showing that bonded, how it's bonded to the deoxyribose sugar on that top left-hand corner there. Okay, on the top right-hand corner of that deoxyribose sugar, that's what's bonded to our base. So the bit that's in red there, okay? So that's that bond to the nitrogen in the bottom left-hand corner of our base molecule. 
Now this actually continues down. You can see now where the bottom of this deoxyribose sugar that I've already drawn bonds to another phosphate, which then bonds to another deoxyribose sugar, which is then in turn bonded to another base. And that just continues on and on and on. And we get that repeating unit of phosphate sugar, phosphate sugar, phosphate sugar, and of course each sugar attached to a base. Now what I'm doing here on the right hand side is doing my best to draw the same thing but upside down because what we have is another backbone of phosphate and sugars running parallel to the one on the left hand side but in the opposite direction. So this is upside down okay compared to the other one. So they're running in the opposite direction and that's because what we need are these base pairs next to each other. So you can see how we've got two backbones, one on the left of phosphate and sugar, one on the right of phosphate and sugar, and then those bases kind of uh, you know, jerk out into the middle or in between these two molecules. Now this is massively important. These two individual strands of DNA are held together by hydrogen bonding directly between the bases. Now that hydrogen bonding only occurs between what we call base pairs, and that's adenine and thymine, cytosine and guanine. So A, adenine is always paired with T for thymine, C is always paired with G, so cytosine always paired with guanine. And I'm gonna go into that in a little more detail as to why in a second, but here's some key points here. So DNA is actually double stranded. Those two strands, we get those backbone of the phosphate and sugar running in opposite directions. And what holds these two strands together is the hydrogen bonding between the base pairs and that holds everything together. So rather rudimentally, it looks like this. The two black lines are the phosphate sugar backbones. The bases are like rungs on a ladder going out into the middle and holding those two strands together. But it doesn't actually look like that. That's not the classic image of DNA that you've probably seen. DNA actually twists. DNA is twisted and it forms a double helix. It's called a double helix because we've got those two strands, remember it's double stranded, and they spin around each other like a helter skelter if you like, and that forms this double helix of DNA. Now if you're doing biology you know that there's further structure to this, but we don't need to know it in chemistry, we just need to know what the bonds are involved when putting these things together, like the phosphate, the sugar, and the hydrogen bonding between the base pairs. Now, speaking of base pairs, I mentioned that they pair up adenine, thymine, and cytosine and guanine. Now, why is that? Well, we need to look at their structure in more detail to understand exactly why they only pair up together in those, what we call base pairs. And it's all to do with the fact that there are hydrogen bonds between the two molecules. Now, before I start this, all I'm going to say is, again, you do not need to remember the structure of adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine, okay? All these for that matter, but, you know, they're relatively simple. I'm going to just be using por the portions that are involved in hydrogen bonding here. And if you look in your AQA data sheet, you will see, you know, where these portions are coming from. So I'm just going to be clear. I'm just showing where the two ends of the bases come together in these diagrams I'm going to do now for you. Now on the right hand side of an adenine molecule, what we have is this part of the structure here. Most importantly, we've got a nitrogen at the bottom. Now that nitrogen has got a lone pair. At the top here, we've got an amine group. That amine group, of course, can show hydrogen bonding. That's what we're looking at. We've got that delta positive of that hydrogen on that amine group. Now, when it comes to thymine, thymine as a base is built to be paired with adenine because if you look at this section of the thymine group, then we've got an NH at the bottom, delta positive hydrogen, ripe for hydrogen bonding, and we've got a double bond O. That's got a lone pair on it. So you can see, hopefully, how these two are gonna marry up like pieces of a jigsaw. So the lone pair on the oxygen is hydrogen bonding with the delta positive hydrogen from the amine group in adenine. And on the bottom, we've got an NH in thymine that's hydrogen bonding with a lone pair in the nitrogen of adenine. So they form two hydrogen bonds. Now, cytosine is built slightly 
differently. What we've got here is a double bonded oxygen, lone pair, standard. Then we've got a secondary amine group, NH, delta positive H, and then another secondary amine group, NH, again with a delta positive H. Now, guess what? Guanine is built to fit this like a piece of a jigsaw. So guanine, we have a secondary amine group at the top here, delta positive hydrogen. We've got a nitrogen in the middle with a lone pair. And then that goes around to a carbon, which has a double bond on it. And again, we see a lone pair on the oxygen. That nitrogen goes off to the rest of the molecule here. So remember, these are just sections that actually get involved with the hydrogen bonding. But actually what you can see here is how these groups match up and hydrogen bonding takes hold between three different parts of this molecule or these molecules. So cytosine and guanine actually have three hydrogen bonds forming between the two base molecules. So hopefully you can see here how adenine and thymine, they're matched together because of these particular groups. If you try to match adenine with guanine, let's say, then it wouldn't work because this forms two hydrogen bonds, this needs three. So adenine and thymine go together because they form two hydrogen bonds, cytosine and guanine because they have three. So overall here, three groups, don't worry, they are given to you in your data sheet, but know how they're put together. Know that there are condensation reactions to form these new covalent bonds to make the larger molecule. Once we've got this backbone running in opposite directions, okay, and then these base pairs are held together by hydrogen bonding. And of course, we get this double helix structure here as it twists around. And the classic question is, you know, why does adenine pair with thymine? Why does cytosine pair with guanine? And be prepared to draw these molecules from your data sheet and show where they hydrogen bond to each other. Like I said, I've just drawn portions. There's rest of the molecules going on here, but this is the important bit. This is the bit that actually helps them or allows them to hydrogen bond to each other. So that's your DNA structure, folks.